Comparing SD cards can become overwhelming, especially if the differences are minute, but these minute differences can be so important for your needs. Since storage is an essential feature for pretty much any device, knowing the basics of what differentiates one from another is crucial. So let's dive into some of the factors that distinguishes SD cards from V30, V60 and V90. Hello everyone, my name's Mike and here at Sabrent we love to make and talk tech. So if that's what you're into then make sure to hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you can stay updated with all our future videos. To better understand SD card capabilities, the SD association has broken them down into four designations for performance. So you have speed class, UHS speed class, video speed class and application performance class. Today consumers are most aware of probably the latter three for modern devices. With speed classes, there are three different kinds indicating the minimum sequential write speeds. The first SD class speeds were 2, 4, 6 and 10 megabytes per second, appearing within the letter C. 2, 4 and 6 class speeds aren't so common nowadays and I'll typically avoid these cards. Almost all modern cards will have the speed class 10 classification now. The UHS speed classes can sustain either 10 or 30 megabytes per second. You will see either a 1 or a 3 placed inside the letter U and the higher the number is typically the faster and better card. And lastly and more recently thanks to the popularity of video content creation is SD cards now have a label for video speed class to make sure consumers can choose the right card for their video needs. This label is with a V for video speed class with a number next to it to indicate the sustained minimum sequential write speeds. The three main video speed classes are V30, V60 and V90. As mentioned earlier, the prefix V refers to video speed class and the number next to it denotes the minimum sequential write speeds offered by each card standard. What you as the user need to keep in mind is that the speed class does not specify the actual performance speed of that particular card, just the minimum requirements for that speed class. One of the most prominent reasons behind the introduction of a video speed class was to meet the 4K re video recording needs and transfer requirements. While many cameras use V30 cards to shoot 4K content, you will need a fast card if you want to shoot a higher frame rate or higher bitrate 4K video. So for someone who loves shooting content like myself, matching the SD card to the specific device's requirements is crucial. This is even more important if you want to shoot high quality 4K video. V30 cards have been around for many years and most likely could have been the first SD card you've bought for your camera. These cards have a minimum of 30 megabytes per second sequential write speeds. They are usually best for cameras that shoot in 1080p, however they can also support some 4K video recording, albeit at a lower bitrate and lower frame rate. V60 cards have a sequential write speed of 60 megabytes per second. The class is actually designed specifically for support for 4K video recording and file transfer. This card is far more capable for high quality 4K recording as well as high frame rate 4K recording. There are still some limitations on some 4K recording modes in many cameras like many of the Sony cameras that I use here, which is where our next standard is actually meant to address. The V90 video speed class provides a minimum sequential speed of 90 megabytes per second. This is 50% faster than the V60 video speed class, which means that there are far more video formats that this card can record in. These cards are highly focused to meet the demands and needs for high bitrate and high frame rate 4K recording, as well as up to 8K recording too. Right now there are many cameras out there that require a V90 card for this type of recording and it's only going to increase as more cameras are going to record in this kind of format and high bitrate. So going over the differences between all the cards, V30 cards are slower and don't support the new demanding needs of today's photographers and cinematographers, hence why I'm going to focus on the differences between the V60 and V90 cards instead. So far we have spoken about video but even photographers need these high speed cards. More and more cameras are shooting in higher resolution photos and faster burst rates too, meaning clearing the buffer and writing to the card faster than ever is such a must for so many. 
Wildlife photographers, sports photographers understand the need for faster writing speeds as the slower the camera writes to the card, the more likely you will miss that crucial money-making shot. To tell the differences between both the cards can be a little bit difficult at first glance. Both cards have the same form factor and same physical dimensions. The only way to tell is either if you test both cards using your computer or by looking at the label on the card itself and you should see either V60 or V90. Now let me go through three main aspects to help you decide on which card suits you best. And those are gonna be camera compatibility, your project requirements and your workflow demands. Camera companies often specify the ideal memory card that is gonna be most compatible with their models. If high speed photography or high bit rate video is part of the camera specifications, then it will most likely require a V90 card. However, basic video cameras and photo cameras could use either a V60 or even a V30 card. It's best to check with the manufacturer to see which card is best to make sure you aren't limiting any of the camera features. Using the wrong card can lead to either certain recording formats not being available, or even worse, it might even stop recording and corrupting your video file. When it comes to your project requirements, for the most part, you want to record in the highest quality video format. This could either be an 8K for better repositioning your clip in post, or high bitrate 4K video for higher color depth and more information per frame of video. Shooting in the best video quality possible can give you a smoother color grading experience as well. V90 cards for the most part will give you this flexibility as you are able to record in these high bit rate and high quality formats but can also be used for lower format cameras if a quick turnaround is needed. Also for action and sports photography V90 cards should be the right choice too as you want to have that fast offloading from the buffer. V90 cards can be used for 4K video formats as well, so it's best to check with your camera manufacturer. And lastly, workflow demands. Workflows can play a vital role in selecting the card most suitable for you. Usually, even if your project is not highly technical, going for the faster card can help you achieve better performance. This means that when you need to make a quick file transfer, V90 cards come in handy, especially if you have several cards and a lot of footage. The less time you spend on transferring files, the quicker you can just get into editing and posting your work and, well, as they say, time is money. Many people, including myself, use V90 cards, even when the camera doesn't require it, just for the time saving when offloading photos and videos to the computer. So as always, the perfect card choice depends on your needs and the device for which you're buying the SD card for. There are some factors like transfer times that mean choosing the fastest card will help you with your workflow, even if the card might be higher spec than what your camera needs. Needs. Also, choosing the highest speed card now could mean not having to throw away your older cards when it's time to upgrade your camera and having to spend even more money after you've bought your brand new camera and potential lenses. Understanding your speed requirements from your device to your workflow will go a long way in helping you choose the most optimal card. At the end of the day, you need to decide what works best for you. Anyway, I really hope that you found this video helpful. And if you did, then make sure to drop us a like and leave us a comment down below. Also, make sure to hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you can stay updated with all our future videos. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.